Welcome back. We were discussing all about Siddhantam. Now comes the biggest contribution of Indian Siddhantam to the mankind. In our sixth session of Pratiswara mode of learning, we understood that the actions performed by our body are of three types. The first is voluntary action. Lifting of our hand, running, walking, etc. are all considered as voluntary action as we as humans have control over these actions and we are able to dictate these actions through our mind. The second type of actions are involuntary action which happens in our body automatically and we have absolutely no control over it. Now, the common question that rises in everyone's mind is can by any means, can we have control over our involuntary actions? For example, just like we can control our hand and fingers through our mind, can by any means, can we control our heartbeat? Can we control our lungs breathing action? Can we stop the digestive fluid flow? Or can we release more glucose to stomach? Can we control fat generation in body? Is it by any means possible to control these things through our mind? This question was raised in the mind of great science around 2600 years ago. And in 4th century BC, the great saint by name Kanada, his other name is Kashyapa. In this process of thinking, he defined a new theory about universe and God. Taking reference from Vedas and Vedavyasa scriptures, he put forth the theory that when we keep on dividing every matter in this universe, the smallest particle of every matter is the same and it is similar to our Brahmanda or solar system. His theory in short was that every matter in the universe has a solar system in it. He named the smallest particle as Anu and told that God is nothing but this Anu. God created the universe and does not reside in some other planet but he is always among with us in every single part of this world and this part which has made this world is what we call today as atom. The structure of atom with nucleus at its center and electrons revolving around it is similar to our solar system. This was a revolutionary theory and he presented this entire concept in a Siddhanta called as Vaisheshika Sutra. This beautiful philosophy of Conrad led to the birth of a new philosophical thinking called as ontology. In Vaisheshika Sutra, he gave a clear picture of nucleus, electrons and protons. He proposed the theory that motion exists in every particle as revolution of electrons take place in every object even when the object is at still. He even defined kinetic and potential energy in his sutra. This sutra is nothing but physics of today. Initially, when this theory was proposed saying that every particle in this world is made up of the same kind of structure called atom and this atom is similar to our solar system, everyone laughed at it and thought it to be a foolish imagination. Except a Greek scientist called Democritus who was born after 200 years, no one supported this idea. In 1810, Dalton proposed the atomic theory. Only after Dalton theory on atoms, we understood the importance of Vaisheshika Sutra. Concept proposed by Kannada were not might or imagination, but it was the birth of physics. If at all, the Vaisheshika Sutra was popularized and publicized like Dalton theory, then humans could have had access to the structure of atom nearly 2600 years ago and you could imagine the progress humans could have made if at all we were able to know it so many years before. So physics was formulated by Kannada in Vaisheshika Sutra. The intention of Kannada was not physics. He was actually exploring the possibility of how we can control our involuntary actions of our body through our mind. Canada also proposed the cell theory of humans and told every human are also made up of anu or atoms and this is what we call as the human cells. He told if we can develop a means to talk to these anus or human cells that is generated in our body, 
then we can communicate with the cells of our body and in turn we can control the involuntary actions that happen in our body. This concept was later explored in many Siddhanta. Exploring the Katha Upanishad in Rig Veda, many Munis and scholars were able to work on the concept of controlling our involuntary action through our mind and establishing our supremacy over our body. This concept of controlling over the body involuntary action through a process of dhyana and meditation was first proposed by Veda Vyasaru in Bhagavata Purana. We discussed in our brain training about neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Our memory and our intelligence depends on these two actions that takes place in our brain. Although this process was innovated in medical science in the 19th and 20th century, 4000 years back, the process of how the brain works and how we can control the process of intelligence was first described by Maharshi Vyasaru in a sutra called as Yoga Sutra, which is also a very important Siddhantam in medical science. According to the Siddhantam of Veda Vyasaru, there are seven energy points in our body, which we call as the seven chakras. They are Sahasara, Ajna, Vishuddha, Anahata, Manipura, Swadishtadhara and Muladhara. By concentrating our mind on these chakras, through our mind, we can establish connection with them and through them, we can control the inner involuntary actions of our body. He also proposed that neural senses which trigger neurogenesis and neuroplasticity are present at the tip of our fingers in our hands and legs. So by concentrating on seven chakra and by gently pressing the neural sensors of our fingers, we can trigger the process of neuroplasticity which in turn helps us to be more intelligent. So Veda Vyasaru for learners prescribe a few specific asanas and meditation principles. He proposed it to trigger neural sensors and the chakras by gently touching the fingers and touching the chakras with some postures and this entire process he described it in his Yoga Shastra. Based on the Siddhantam, learning process was started at the age of 8 in our education system. It was started with a ritual called Upanayana and after the Upanayana, man enters the stage of Brahmacharya. He proposed a specific set of actions to be performed by every learner with Dhyana and some mantras. He also connected the functioning of our brain and neural system with the position of the sun and the moon. The ray that falls on the man in the early morning from the sun contains a specific brain triggering component. Veda Vyasaru named it as Gayatri and today medical science calls this as vitamin D. Then in the afternoon when sun comes to the top then it releases ultraviolet radiation and Veda Vyasaru called this ultraviolet radiation as God Savitri and in the evening when the sun sets it has some special infrared radiations and Veda Vyasaru called this by the name Saraswati. He prescribed every learner to start his learning with early morning exposure to sun rays that is to get Gayatri and to get it he has to perform a specific action to trigger the neural system to receive vitamin D. After the exposure to Gayatri rays, our brain will carry out neurogenesis more efficiently with vitamin D. And so new learning and new subject has to be learned in the period between morning and afternoon. In the afternoon, he again prescribed a specific kriya with the dhyana of Savitri. And now this exposure to ultraviolet radiation with some postures triggered neuroplasticity. So in learning, the time afternoon was dedicated to recalling our old learning. 
or in the afternoon we spend the time of learning to abhyasa prakriya then in the evening the learning process of the day was concluded with the dhyana of saraswati invoking saraswati when we leave our brain free from all our senses in the night as already discussed in our sleep session this creates myelin sheets in the neuron cells and triggers neuroplasticity which will help us to cement our learning permanently in our brain so this kriya proposed by veda vyasaru in yoga shastra is followed even today and this is what we call as sandhya vandana today sandhya vandana doing it three times once with gayatri vitamin d then with savitri uv radiation in the afternoon and then with saraswati in the evening was actually proposed by veda vyasaru for every learner to improve his brain power with some specific poses asanas and mantras but later this became a ritual associated with the caste called brahmins nowhere in vedas or upanishad it is mentioned that this is an action related to a caste but this is referred as an action to be followed by every learner to trigger his brain power now today if you go to youtube and search for brain exercises then you get some exercises proposed by neurologists to improve your neuroplasticity and neurogenesis process when you go through these exercises you can clearly see that the poses and actions mentioned by neurologists to trigger neuroplasticity and then the poses and asanas proposed by veda vyasaru in yoga shastra are almost the same holding hands to trigger neural sensors at the finger touching all the sensory organ touching the seven chakras and invoking those cells all are similar to the process veda vyasaru proposed in yoga shastra which is today termed as sandhya vandana so yoga shastra siddhantam of veda vyasaru was not some superstitious practice of a particular caste in hindu community but it was the neural exercises proposed by veda vyasaru to trigger our brain for learning and today when neurologists are asking us to make the same exercises to trigger our brain we understand what veda vyasaru told in yoga shastra was nothing but neural exercises for every learner this process of sandhya vandana proposed by veda vyasaru in yoga shastra was later developed with more specific postures by many other maharshis like panini and finally a complete set of postures and procedures to communicate with the cells of our body and control our human involuntary action was started by a maharshi called patanjali in the 1st century ad patanjali was actually a dravidian born in chidambaram of tamil nadu the set of postures is what we call as patanjali yoga yoga was another greatest contribution to the mankind from the siddhantam of our learning system it is related to health and medicine yoga is a preventive medicine to protect our body from possible diseases through our communication with every cell of our body through meditation and few postures so the first ever physical exercise or the gymnasium opened in 1st century ad by a muni called patanjali he defined postures and exercises needed to need a healthy and long life and that led to the birth of the field of yoga and yoga shastra so after health then the most another important precious item in the human race is diamonds diamonds were known only as a piece of carbon no one knew its value until another great indian philosopher called nagarjuna introduced his siddhantam of rasendra mangalam he presented the world the art of purifying metals and this led to the birth of a new field called alchemy 
It all started with Shushruta and Charaka Siddhanta. When Charaka explored medicines from herbs and plants, Nagarjuna, who was born in the Vidarbha region, started to explore the possibility of cure to diseases through metals. He succeeded in it and led to the birth of a new Siddhantam called Rasayana. This Rasayana was all about metallurgy, purifying metals and this led to the birth of gold, diamond and stones. The world's first diamond was extracted from the sands of Guntur in Andhra Pradesh. From 9000 BC to 18th century, the only source of diamond to the world was this Guntur district. Once it was exhausted here, diamonds from Brazil, Africa and Australia made it into the market. Nagarjuna Rasendra Mangalam gave birth to a particular community of people in India who by birth were skilled in cutting diamonds. They settled on the western bank of India and this place is known as Surat of Gujarat. A few of them migrated to Belgium, Antwerp and established their supremacy even there in diamond business. All due to the Siddhantam of Nagarjuna's Rasendra Mangalam. Long ago, in 376 BC, Chanakya published the Siddhantam called Arthashastra, which is the first ever documented material about business management and commerce. Then in 505 BC, another sage Varaha Mihira published Pancha Siddhanta about astronomy. The world's first calendar was made available through this Siddhantam in the name of Panchanga. So the list goes on, on and on. So Indian knowledge system was not just about mythological stories, gods and rule books. It is not about caste. It is not about just God. If you go through the documentation of Indian knowledge system, God and mythology and all about various rules and smritis represent just 15% of our documentation and the remaining 85% is all about the various Siddhantam signs and about the skills. Most of the people mistake the vast history of document found in our India is all about Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita and Vedas. They think it is a mythological faith followed blindly by a group of people called Hindus. But the reality is that Purana, Sitihasa, Ramayana and Mahabharata were just a small part of a vast learning system and the last category of our learning system Siddhantam was never explored. Hence, this Indian knowledge system and Gurukul was not just about reciting mantras and performing rituals. It has all the branches of science and technology hidden in the form of various Siddhantam and bringing these documents to light and making the children aware about these documents is the main motto of Indian knowledge system. Macaulay's system completely ignored these contributions from Indian scientists and the students were made to feel that Indian system of education is just about mantras and superstitious beliefs. Now it is time to introduce these Siddhantams of great scientists of India like Kanad, Sushrut, Varahamihira, Nagarjuna, Patanjali, Charaka, Madhava, and they were no way inferior to Western scientists like Einstein, Newton or Edison. Making the current generation of students understand the greatness of these forgotten geniuses of our land is the main motto of our new national education policy. Now apart from this huge knowledge system, Indian knowledge system had the best educational institutions and the school of philosophies and science. Let us know about this Indian school of philosophies in our next session. And with these sessions, let us conclude our Indian knowledge system discussion and move ahead with our learning journey of Ganga. Thank you.